Hi, everybody. Welcome back for another awesome episode of For the Love of Health web series, where we get to the honor, I get the honor to talk to um, an amazing array of holistic health practitioners, coaches, healers, service-based providers, service-based providers rather, who are shifting their services online or they're showing up more online for visibility and to directly connect and grow their audiences. Um, and I'm here today with Deneen Vigiano. We were just going on, we're both cat owners. Uh, she, we both live in Harlem. She lives in Harlem still, in Harlem, New York. Uh, so all the memories are flooding back from college, the good old days. And Deneen is a therapeutic back pain specialist. So uh, we're going to learn a little bit about how um, she has shaped her business and what's going on. How you doing today, Deneen? Hey, Laura. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Deneen, how, how long have you been um, and what, what is the name of your business? So my company's called Retrain Back Pain, and uh, I've been in the therapeutic fitness nutrition uh, space for 22 years. Wow. Okay. So um, you definitely have a long, a long time that, to have shaped this thing. And how long have you been doing um, this particular part of your business? Since 2016. So I guess that's about six years now. Yeah. Awesome. So six years in your current role, but like 22 years in the long haul in the health industry. Wow. Um, so what kind of other jobs or things did you do before you evolved into this current position? Yeah. I mean, when I, when I left college, um, I was working on wall street actually here in New York and I was an international institutional equity broker. So I was traveling, around Italy and Switzerland selling US equities to European investors. And, um, you know, a couple things happened. My, my dad had died and then um, September 11th happened here in New York. And I, I think around that time I was turning 30 and um, it just caused me to really stop and think like, what am I doing with my life? You know, I, 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 what I did was, this is a kind of a cool exercise. I had some postcards. I had blue and, and pink postcards. And on the blue postcards, I wrote down, um, for, e for each postcard, I wrote down a priority of mine, something that's important to me. And then on the pink postcards, I wrote down where I was spending my time. And then I ranked them on the floor. And when I stood up and I looked at them, not only, it's not that they were in the wrong order. I didn't even have the same words. So I realized it was a really strong visual. I realized in that moment that where I was spending my time was not serving what was important to me. So I made a career switch. Oh my gosh, I love that. So how did you find out about that exercise or did that something that just you thought of? That's pretty brilliant. Oh yeah, no, I don't know. I just thought of it actually. I just, uh, I just started, I, I thought about mind mapping and then I just thought that would be an, an effective way to figure it out. And I was sort of, at that point, I think I was spinning out in my living room while they kept replaying all that 9-11 footage, you know, and I needed, I needed to get out of the news cycle, so to speak. So, yeah. It was a catalyst for me too. I went up to New York for a theater audition or like a film audition the day after. I remember my grandmother asking me because I was a young preteen, you know, like, do you, you know, do you want to go? And I said, well, do you? And she's like, you know, it's, it's an opportunity. And um, yeah, so she left it up to me and I decided and she supported me. And we went up there and, you know, visited the city the day after. And it was like absolutely devastating. And it was the major catalyst for me to choosing to go to school in New York. So living there in that, you know, decade after. So I totally understand the the weight and the emotional, you know, reasoning behind what you're saying. I could, I could actually really visualize you right now in like your New York City apartment uh, with these different colored cards and then just being like, wow, like, where is this? Where are these correlations? So um, after you did this mind mapping, um, you know, and getting onto a different track, you know, what, you know, what kind of opportunities came your way? Why back pain? Well, I mean, at that time I was, um, I was practicing yoga pretty regularly and I thought, oh, I'll stop, I'll stop doing what I'm doing and I'll open a yoga studio is what I had originally thought. Like I'll go in this direction and, and be a studio owner. And then I got my mitts on some of the financials about running a studio in New York city. And I had already been teaching uh, freelance around the city for the better part of a year or two. 
And, um, and when I saw the financials of, of like rents and costs of, of owning a studio in New York, I was like, I really don't want to give up all my independence and freedom to be a studio owner and not make any profit in New York City. I mean, the rents here are ex extraordinary. So, um, so I continued to be a uh, workshop class and one-to-one -one private teacher for I think about seven or eight years in New York. And then I was, you know, I, I was getting a little bored, to be honest. Um, there was some foo-foo fluffy stuff going on in the yoga space that, you know, it didn't really jive with my personality. I'm pretty sort of brass tacks, you know, really practical. I don't put on airs for anything for anyone. And and some some of what was happening in the yoga industry at that time was a little maddening for me. And one of the things that was that was irking me were sort of these cliche phrases that would get tossed around that had no basis in anatomy or physiology. Um, and so I decided to study some anatomy and physiology and, and, and I started working for uh, Jill Miller. Um, her organization is called Tune Up Fitness Yoga Tune Up and I became one of the lead trainers for Tune Up Fitness in 2010. Um, between um, my epiphany with the note cards and working with Tune Up Fitness and becoming a senior trainer for them, I had also become a certified nutrition counselor and a certified holistic health coach. And I was already studying craniosacral therapy and I was doing some anatomy studies on my own. Um, and then working with Tune Up Fitness really just sort of alighted my love of learning. And I kind of went back to the drawing board and, and started learning a ton. I did some cadaver dissections to learn more about the physical body. And um, I was teaching uh, professional training modules on the topics of shoulders, hips, core, breath, anatomy, therapy ball, myofascial self-massage, something else. I forgot what. I think injury man I think I added sort of injury management in there. And then and then along that continuum of time and space, um, I lost my mom, I got pregnant, I had a child. Um, and then my back started hurting somewhere in there. And uh when my back started hurting, you know, I'm in New York, I'm a knowledgeable body person. Um, I went to the doctor, I went to the orthopedic spine specialist, I went to a neuro, a, a neurologist, I went to a surgeon, I went to a massage therapist, an acupuncturist. I mean, I can't really list all the people I went to go see for relief because there were too many and the majority of them were out of pocket expenses. They weren't covered by my, my insurance. So I would say conservatively over a period of eight or nine months, I probably spent at least $2,000 trying to get relief for this back pain that was stopping me from teaching and stopping me from picking up my child. And it was really getting in the way of me being me and doing the things that I love. And, uh, and I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing, but it just seemed to be getting worse. And I seemed to be getting lots of conflicting answers and and uh, at some point I saw my young son playing on the floor and it was a cold winter day, it was snowing out. We lived at the time in a drafty pre-war apartment uh, in West Harlem and I wouldn't get down on the floor because I knew that if I sat on the floor on a drafty winter floor with my back to play with my son, I probably wouldn't be able to move for a month. And it was sort of in that moment that I, I had this very real realiza realization that, wow, I am becoming disabled. And my son was barely, I think he was like maybe four or something. I can't remember how old he was, but he was young. And I was already adjusting what I was doing with him because of my back, like being less of the athletic dynamic person that I am, right? And so it was in that moment that I was like, boom something's got to change. The way the world is treating me with back pain is not the way I want to be treated. This is not how I want to manage my back pain. And, you know, every time I, I would go see a new clinician or a new doctor, it was all about, you know, the first 15 minutes to the whole visit was all about telling you how broken you are. It's all about reiterating um, your injury to you in different words that were very nociceptive, which is um, sort of noxious languaging, right? 
And so I figured if this is all New York City has, and I, I kind of felt like I exhausted it. I'd gone to the top back pain yoga person in New York. I'd gone to the top back pain massage therapist in New York. Um, I thought if this is the best we got, I bet I can do better. I bet there's another way. And it was from that moment on that I decided to use my prior 15 years worth of um, experience and studies and continuing education and nutrition. And, you know, I was, I was sort of a diverse learner around how to help the body be well and live well and live long, especially after my parents were both, um, you know, died premature deaths from cancer. I was highly motivated to figure, figure this thing out. Like, you know, how do we not, how do we not suffer and die? was really my motivation for getting healthy and switching careers and studying nutrition. And so, you know, my approach to back pain is that it is a, it's a whole person issue and it requires a whole person solution. And well, thank currently, you thank you for sharing that amazing, I mean, that amazing story. Um, and I want to go back a little bit to, you know, your financial career underpinning and that ability to see very clearly that a brick and mortar wasn't the way to go, right? Because I would have sent you down a very different thing. And who knows, it might have exacerbated your, your situation even more. Um, Because physically and mentally, emotionally, you would have been a whole other animal, a whole other dynamic there. Um, And, you know, I think a lot of people that I speak to, I know the people I speak to, they're like, immediately, they're like, I'm going to open the clinic, I'm going to open the practice, I'm going to have the overhead. Um, You know, that, you know, did that practicality serve you? Um, Do you have a liberating quality now because you can serve online? How has that helped you? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's a little maddening to hop from there were a couple of years where I was traversing all over New York City. Um, I think right when I got pregnant, I realized that, wow, I'm spending five hours a day on public transportation. Yeah, so yeah, I remember that I was uh, did, I was early childhood studios because I worked for a small boutique company in mid Manhattan. They're not around anymore. They did not survive the Second Avenue subway line. <laughs> um, but you know, yeah, hoofing, hoofing all over town and, and workshops in person. Um, so you know, but your business is not in person, correct? Your business is online. Well, it's been online since the pandemic only. Okay. Prior to that, it was all um, one-to-ones in person, classes in person at a studio, uh, workshops, retreats, and professional trainings, all, all one-to-one. Yeah. All, all, I'm sorry, not all one-to-one, all in person. Okay. Um, so it's just since the pandemic that I've moved everything online. Yeah, and let's let's speak to that because you know you didn't open the yoga studio because you knew that it was going to be a harder profit margin dynamic. Um, so working in a one to one, do you feel like that's necessary? Like the physical manual is necessary for the business, or have you found some ways that? Because um, I think that really will serve people here in this community. Uh, we have a lot of chiropractors, osteopathic physicians, people who really feel like that physical. Um, I, I spoke to a therapist who you know might have adolescents and that. That she was she recommended that adolescents have hybrid where there is some in-person interaction um, because of just what they have the sensory abilities so you know what what has served you what what are you what are you like wow that works i mean it takes a lot of time for your clients from the perspective of you know physios and chiropractors and manual therapists and other clinicians who have an office and have been working in an office and are thinking about going out on your own I mean, it's, um, it is a lot of overhead. It is a lot of headache because then you need staff and, you know, you need operating, operating revenue to run your office. And, and then there's things like shutdowns that, you know, have just decimated a lot of businesses, but from the perspective of perspective of your clients also, you know, it's really inconvenient to travel to your office and, you know, to have the going to your office time, the being in your office time, and then the going home from your office time. Um, that is, depending on where you are and where they are, that's that's a total pain in the butt for a lot of people. And so in that respect, I think that the pandemic bringing more people and more businesses online has, um, you know, we, we just leapt like 15 years in, in 
uh, technology and trying to convince people that doing these sorts of things in person um, is okay and it works. Um, you know, my my personal story was that a lot of the hands-on work that I was doing, um, you know, I'm not a manual therapist. I'm not licensed with the state to really be touching people. Uh, technically, it's out of my scope of practice. But I, I was doing neurokinetic therapy with people and doing some muscle testing with them. And and I still very much, I, I, I love neurokinetic muscle testing. And um, But in, in terms of the work that I do with my clients, it's I'm really a believer in cue them to find their own way and sharpen your ability to see and to listen and to help your clients find what you want them to do. So I think really, really, um, intelligent cueing uh, can almost do away with the need to, you know, put hands on people and move them into a different position that, you know, that's different for chiropractic adjustments, of course. Uh, but for my business, it was uh, a part of the business I wasn't really comfortable developing further in the neurokinetic therapy part because, uh, because of the licensure. I think that's gold though, Denine, what you just talked about, um, the idea of kind of dialing in and figuring and, and really getting your um, your customers, whether they're in person or not, to really see where they're going. And um, if, I, if I'm saying that correctly, am I, if, I'm, if I'm saying what you're saying correctly, um, to, you know, be part of that process and to really lay out that those things, because those can play out many different ways. And wouldn't that also encourage a better participation in them in the brand loyalty, right? So that there's like a sense of customer journey, sense of outcome, rather than and a better sense of positioning, right? Because you're, you're coming you're attacking this in a particular way, rather than just this overall broad way, right? We're not just going for like an adjustment, we're going to this person for a specific reason for beyond the adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's also, you know, I think this current environment of online um, client interaction, it's also, it also plays into the increasing importance of the biopsychosocial model of client care. And so, you know, previously we were all very mechanistic, like you've got a herniated disc, we're going to do this for your herniated disc and we are going to fix you. That, you know, if you work, if you give somebody the exercises for a herniated disc, but they're still sitting the same way, doing the same exercises, thinking the same way, moving through life the same way, chances of that same pressure point, that same weak link, continuing to be weakened and aggravated are very high. Um, and so I think I think this period of um, you know working with clients either in a hybrid model or one-to-one -one via Zoom or Skype or some, some other secure network, I think it also lends itself really well to um, acceptance and cognition, um, acceptance commitment theory or cognitive behavioral theory or, you know, whatever um, biopsychosocial mindset coping management mechanism you want to deal with. I, you know, I think in the past, especially for chiropractors and massage therapists, you know, they're very much in their lane. Like, this is my specialty. This is what I do. And I think it's okay if you're trained in nutrition and if you're trained in ACT or CBT, I think it's really, and you've got the trust of your clients. I think it's invaluable to be able to offer them multidisciplinary services. And if you're not the person to do it, then what I'm really hoping for and what I'm really excited about is I'm really excited about professional collaborations. I'm really excited about creating alliances across different disciplines whereby a chiropractor um, who doesn't have a ton of holistic multidisciplinary skills can say, go see Deneen. She's really great with spondylolisthesis and she'll really empower, you know what I mean? So I, I really, I'm excited about clinicians starting to reach out to other clinicians and refer uh, back and forth with a lot more confidence and a lot more um, commitment to each other as professionals. I think that's really well, exciting. 
That's definitely the intention behind For the Love of Health Facebook community. It's the entire um, initiative is just that, finding those ideal collaborations, knowing what is an ideal collaboration um, for where you're at in your business. And I think you bring up a really excellent point with the, um, um, and you know, not doing disservice by allowing our service to be the only thing. Um, kind of, you know, removing some of our, um, all our method is the only way out of it in really allowing that space for the clients to tell us what they really need. And, you you know, the, the real conflict that a lot of people are facing as health practitioners is just not seeing the progress. Um, and that may, and I know with my own personal healing journey, you know, it wasn't until I was integrating energy healing that some of the other things made sense, right? Like it, it, other components sometimes are the ways to make that healing just those little stuck motions keep happening and keep the person feeling successful in their healing process. All right. Well, do you have any current challenges or things that you want us to know about so we can better support you in your business journey? Oh, you know, marketing is just such a bear. <laughs> you know, I, I this year um, I aspire to hiring some virtual uh, virtual team members that are going to help me with the marketing because I'm really, you know, I'm sure a lot of your other um, people in your audience can relate to this. I'm really good at what I do. Um, and then to see how much time I'm spending on all the other stuff that I'm not really good at and I don't really want to be doing, you know, like the bookkeeping and the marketing and all that stuff. I'd, I'd love to be able to outsource that. Yeah, so marketing and all that stuff. I'd, I'd love to be able to outsource. That. Great. Yeah. And you're right. There is definitely, there's the people who are like, I can do this myself. I'm going to do this. And then it doesn't happen. And other people who are like, Nope, that isn't my expertise. I'd rather outsource. So just outsourcing, trading, learning. So yeah, definitely be out there because someone in the community who's like, well, I have a great virtual assistant, <laughs> you know, or I have someone who did this specific or marketing task for me is what you're looking for. Um, so it's always great just to say it out loud. Well, thank you, Deneen, for being here. Um, I, I really, this was a really awesome and really fruitful conversation. Um, and it was great to hear about your business and about what you got going on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I'm really excited to uh, connect with uh, some other some other professionals from within your group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.